This is Cubby's approach to our B-roll camera, and if you can tell, that is an iPhone rubber banded to a. Uh, <laughs> I think those are I-bands. They sell. Oh, excuse me, it's I-bands. I-band. Cubby, can you explain Apple how this website. came together at all? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Jumpstart Podcast. This is a place where we dump kerosene on the bonfire of your children's ministry. And woof. <laughs> That's good. This is episode 16. 16, right here, right now. I'm super excited. Dan, thanks for joining us again today. Yeah. New Year, January. We got some fun stuff planned today, just kind of to introduce the new year. We're going to be taking a tour of City Church, great children's ministry facility uh, that's in the area here, but a great church nationally. Uh, re- we're going to review a uh, curriculum, high-voltage kids curriculum, yep. uh, and uh, also interview a children's pastor about goals. Because in the new year, everybody's about goals. Are yep. you a goal guy, Brent? Uh, yeah, I like to set goals sometimes. There was one in particular I set last year I'll be excited to tell you about. Maybe in a little bit I'll tell you about okay. it. Okay, you set it in January last year? Set it in January, uh, wrapped it up in December, and stuck through it every single week. It was a three times a week goal where I... Three times a week? Yes. So 156 times you did something. Yes. That, I'm excited to hear what it is. <laughs> Can you make that sound effect again when things blow up? Or... Woo! So uh, let's hop into the the tour, City Church. Yeah, so I was at City Church uh, just a few days ago, and I had a chance to meet with Brandon Ellis. He's in charge of the elementary program, and he gave me a little glimpse at some of the campus there in Kirkland. Brandon, before we head downstairs, I have to pause. This is one of my favorite things. I don't know if you can see it on the camera as much, but all these little buildings are totally sticking out. I didn't even notice it at first, but it gives such a fun dimension to the whole entryway for what you guys got going on downstairs. This is our newly redesigned uh, Space City stage. Uh, we got two windows on the sides. Are you primarily going to be used for puppets? Um, and then also we got three TVs up on the screen so the kids can um, either when we're doing worship, uh, they can see this up there, or if we're doing videos, they can see that as well. Uh, so it's a lot better than what it used to be. We had 11 minutes just going around seeing all their different environments. They did such a good job at tying everything together. And they're kind of at the point in their children's ministry where they've designed the stuff, and now it's been several years and they're kind of redesigning it. Mm. So um, the tour I got to take with City Church was really cool, not only just to see it, but to hear the ideas and the reasoning why why they've shifted from the original idea to kind of plan B with yeah. in regards to how their rooms are set up and how they're using them. Yeah, I don't know if it's the new year or just where we are uh, coincidentally, but I know we're really looking at redesigning, re, uh, just rethinking some of the children's facility stuff. I think that's something you have to do before it's too late. I think we've all been in children's facilities where we go, they probably should have thought five years ago yeah. about this. How do you balance the like form and function of your guys' facilities? Like, Do you make it really cool and then hope it works, or do you like make something super practical and then try to dress it up? I, I think I am such a function guy that that's my default, so I actually have to work to bring some form people alongside me because function's going to happen, right? I'm right. just going to make the form work for me even if I have to rip a hole in it. But, <laughs> uh, so for me, it's I have to bring form people to go, how can I make this look cool, look pretty? Yeah, so, that's cool. Yeah. Cool. Hey, um, New Year. Also, maybe people are thinking about some new curriculum. This is something we do on the Jumpstart Podcast every time is review curriculum. So I know that you picked up a curriculum I've used before, High Voltage Kids. Yep. I had a chance to take a look at it. I've used High Voltage in my children's ministries before as well. It's really cool. I'm just taking a real quick to highvoltage-kids.com. Uh, Brian Dollar and his team have put together some really cool resources. Like I said, stuff that I've used in my church before. He sent us a copy of High Voltage to review and to give away. And so in the next few weeks, that review is going to come out. And wanted to remind you guys, if you would like to win and take home a copy of this curriculum yourself, go ahead and leave a comment in this video or the reviews video. And we're going to give that away each month as we do. Speaking of which... Last time we had the uh, faith case curriculum. Yes, we did. Um, several people uh, commented uh, on the on the website, sent in emails or some other way to, to get their name in, and so we have a winner. Yes, we do. Our winner, winner is, is this guy. Whoever that He's is. He's there. We, we don't know <laughs> yet, but it's uh, yeah. down below. So here it was. If you didn't check out the review, you can always see all of our reviews at cmjumpstart.com. Yeah. But man, this was a it was a cool kit. They there's a lot. They've put a lot of work into this, and so yeah. Um, Especially, and if you like the review, you like the curriculum, you want to pick up a copy for yourself, it's like 150 bucks for 10 weeks. Yeah. And considering all of the media content that comes with each box, it's, it's a real steal. Yeah. So if that's you, this is in the mail, 
uh, enjoy. So, uh, hey, um, so we're going to be, you're going to post the review. We'll send this away as well. So if you want like to get in on this, send us a comment, uh, comment on the, on the CM Jumpstart website or send us an email at cmjumpstart at gmail.com and uh, you'll be in the drawing for next month. High Voltage is a media-rich curriculum designed for elementary age kids. It takes a cutting-edge approach to children's ministries and is designed by children's pastors in a local church. Each volume is written and recorded by Brian Dollar and his team in Little Rock, Arkansas. This is the 21st installment of High Voltage Kids. Brian and his team have been packaging their own material to share with other churches since 1998, and their expertise has resulted in a very consistent, very usable children's ministry curriculum. The 10 lessons of this volume are divided into two series called Teach Us to Pray and Live Like a King. If you're looking for a topical or midweek program, then you should definitely check out High Voltage Kids. Hey, last thing is uh, as we're talking in January, New Year, uh, you had an opportunity to interview a children's pastor, Sidney Morris, a children's pastor from Lakeland, Florida, about something we all should be good at, setting goals. Yeah, she. it was fun to kind of hear her. She's, a, like I said, a pastor at Harvest Assembly, Lakeland, Florida, um, great children's pastor, has a real heart for kids and leaders. And she kind of shared an idea in our interview that I want to kind of highlight real quick. So yeah. uh, here's Sydney in an interview that we did uh, just recently. I, I remember first becoming a children's pastor and yeah. seeing things that everybody else was doing and setting these astronomic goals and I'm thinking I'll never meet these and um, and then just having people around me yeah. that had been in the ministry longer that were successful saying Sydney let's scale this down let's start you know somewhere that's realistic. Yeah. Like, don't set a $100,000 BGMC goal the first year. You you know, right. I mean, unless God really speaks to you and, you know, in faith and, you know, you could. But realistically, you know, like if you're running a children's ministry of 25 and you're realistically, you're saying, I'm going to, so we're going to increase to 300 this year. I mean, yeah. realistic goal. So it's good. It has a good thought. Usually when you talk to someone about setting goals, they're like, yeah, shoot for the moon. Mm -hmm. You can do awesome. And Sydney's like, be realistic about yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that rings true with me. And, and I've really, uh, uh, in where I am in ministry, I'm coming into my seventh year now at my church and starting to see maybe some of the after effects of seeds that have been planted. Uh, and, and something that, that I try to think about, somebody told me that most people think they can accomplish more in one year than they really can. Mm -hmm. and less in three years than they really can because they're just the way our brains are constructed. Yeah. We think short-term yeah. and not long-term. And this is, this is almost a silly goal for me, but it's really changed how we operate in culture at our church. I set a goal that every single one of our volunteers would wear their little name badge. You do that? Did you do those at your yeah, church? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. They, they, so we've never had that ever, had everybody wear one. We didn't even have like everybody has one. Right? We didn't make one for everybody. <laughs> so that's our goal. And even though it's a silly little thing, what I found is, even though it's just like a six-week goal or whatever until we can get it done, it might be two years, I don't know, um, <laughs> it, the, the conversation of accountability, conversation of where's your tag, how can I get your tag, what does our process look like? I'm finding we're pulling all of these weeds out of our system, really streamlining this process and making it more comfortable for me to go to our volunteers and say, this is the goal, how can I help you help me accomplish that? It's been really good even yeah. for, for bigger things. So I have to ask you, Dan, are your volunteers wearing their badges? We have hit in the 80s percent. <laughs> so we got everybody to have one. Now it's the, where is yours? Did you leave it in the car? Right. I like the idea of the, the constant assessment yeah. about a goal. It, it, be it big or small. Um, assessing it on a regular basis opposed to just depending on an annual or semester or however you yeah. do it, evaluation. Yeah. I think sometimes it can feel more like a post-mortem than an actual like constant assessment. Right. I know the uh, um, church I was at most recently down in Olympia, Washington, we, we would set annual goals, but would also revisit them regularly. Yeah. And I know that the leadership team there, they wanted to make that more of just our culture of, hey, how are you doing on this yeah. stuff? And some of it was like, I need to get name badges, but some of it was like, we need to remodel our entire children's ministry. Sure. So there's some big, more three-year stuff and some smaller like, you got to do this this fall. You got to make this happen this fall. 
But just being able to talk about it regularly mm-hmm. make it made it much more natural and much more productive. Yeah, I think uh, if you you probably read Patrick Lencioni's Five Dysfunctions of a Team, yeah. uh, just some of those ideas of setting this as we're not we're not criticizing any person. This is not about feelings. This is about us being effective and, and yeah. whether the goal be remodeling the, the your whole facility or something like name badges, the principle is still the same. But, you know, I'm really excited about to hear about what your thing was. Wait, your three times uh, so a week. Was my, it brushing your teeth? No, you well, no, I didn't do that. Okay. But what I did do was uh, I, I wanted to – I've always loved writing. So my goal uh-huh. is I wanted to write for a year, and I wanted to do write three times a week. But one of them, okay. on Friday, I wanted to write a book review. Uh, I read a lot. Like, I read a lot, a lot. I think yes. this year I read about 60 books. Okay. And I wanted to kind of have something to show up, or at least a, almost like a journal of my reading. Because I was yeah. finding I was tearing through books, but I wasn't doing much reflecting on them. So right. what I did for 2012, I wrote one book review each week for 52 weeks. So you not only read at least one book, a re- you then wrote a review on it. Yes. And in addition, wrote two other times. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. It That's was really... It was how, many, fun. how many? How long has this been in process? Uh, I mean, I've always, I've always loved writing. So uh, you know, it just kind of came about where last year I said, you know, I want to do it. I want to yeah. actually try and do okay. it. I mean, I'd love to write a book or something like that someday. But in the meantime, just the process of like having the discipline to do yeah. it. Everything I, I read about what, when you read about writing is kind of okay. weird. But the, <laughs> yeah. the, this is unplanned. I, uh, but where I think I know where can we find this? Where can our viewers find your book reviews? Because now we're curious. Yes, uh, BrentColby.com. Okay, that's where I've been writing three times a week, and you can see all my reviews from 2012. I did a few random before then, and just a few weeks ago, I posted my top ten books of 2012. Oh, sweet! Which is okay. pretty fun. Yeah, my favorite books of the year. Um, awesome. Yeah, when you read a lot of books, you get to read some great ones, but you also read a bunch of lame yeah. ones. So it's yeah. fun to highlight the winners in a bunch. Yeah. Well, it, that's that's so cool. That's so cool. And I think as a new year, a lot of people are already probably thinking about reading, and that's a great place to get maybe some some great places to start with yeah, reading. Yeah, totally. That's good. So uh, thanks for watching today. Uh, again, we're going to have new material drop every Monday this month. We're yep. going to have that, that interview with Sydney Morrow, the church uh, tour, and, uh, and also the full curriculum review uh, on cmjumpstart.com. Check that out. Don't forget to put your name in, email us, comment on our uh, website for the um, curriculum. We'll be giving that away next month. Cool. Sounds good. All right. My mother-in-law is super classy, but on any holiday, you'll find her half off at Value Village. That's good. It's just, I don't know.